Several residents of a new building in the Navy Yard say the developer left them high and dry because of this deal signed years ago with the city of Boston that nobody told them about, which has made it impossible for them to park on the street. The city actually has hundreds of these, and we found it raises a lot of questions about them. Street parking in the Navy Yard is anything but smooth sailing. Still, most don't find themselves in the same boat as Matty Walsh and Ed Hugasian. Well, I work night shift as a nurse in Boston and having to wake up in the late afternoon kind of holding my breath until I can see my car if it's been towed or ticketed, it's too stressful. They both rent apartments in the Rope Walk, a newly opened building in the shadow of the Tobin Bridge, which makes them residents of Charlestown and eligible to get Charlestown resident parking permits, or so they thought. So we had a pass in August and then the next month we get a letter from the city saying this isn't valid anymore. He was stunned. Ed and Matty say the leasing agent repeatedly led them and others to believe they'd be able to get a street parking permit. This email confirms, quote, you can get a Charlestown resident sticker with proof of residency. Another says there is street parking available. And Ed says he was told in person on a walkthrough of an apartment, he took this video where you can hear a different leasing agent say that tenants can get a neighborhood street parking permit and they're free. And the city began issuing permits to residents who moved in here last summer, but then suddenly revoked them. How much would you say you've had to spend on tickets and toes? Oh, God. Ballpark. Honestly, upwards of probably like $600. Here's the problem. In 2018, the developer of the Rope Walk signed this transportation agreement with the city of Boston, promising that, quote, residents who own vehicles will be required by lease to provide proof of parking arrangements at a nearby parking facility. In other words, get a garage spot, no street permits. But we discovered the developer failed to tell prospective tenants. This lease has only one line about parking, which simply says no parking is allowed on the landlord's property without the landlord's permission. The lack of disclosure of it is astounding. And it's a big hit to the budget. Garage spots in this neighborhood cost hundreds of dollars a month when the rent here is already around three grand. Another $200 a month plus however much we paid in parking tickets, it's not something you typically budget for. If we weren't allowed to have permit parking, that should have been advertised out front when they were viewing these apartments. The developer, a Pennsylvania-based company called Vision Properties, would not talk on camera and told us by email it entered the Rope Walk project midstream. But at the top of the signed agreement, is their PA address. They blamed the city for revoking street permits because the agreement has no language specifically, quote, referring to tenants not being able to apply for resident parking, which is true. The city, which has dozens of these transportation agreements, would not answer our questions about what it actually did to ensure developers follow through on their end of deals and tell renters they'd be on their own in this case to find parking. Now Ed, Maddie, and others here feel they have no choice but to make waves in hopes for some type of compensation. Were you drawn here because you could, knew you could get a city permit? Yeah, I wouldn't have signed here if I couldn't. I kind of think it's very deceitful. Um, I feel taken advantage of because they haven't done anything to fix this issue. Now, the developer tells us they did arrange for a block of parking spots at one of the nearby garages there in the Navy Yard, but they will not cover the cost of those, so still no resolution here to this. It's a good reminder that even in this tight rental market, you can search the city's database of these transportation agreements online, and I'm going to put a link to that in this story on our website. If you've got a consumer story for me, you can email me. The address is ben at wcvb.com.